Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry I can't be with you guys today. Um, in our last week, you guys took a quiz on sound. Uh, if you guys look in your notebooks, um, you'll see that they're already graded. Uh, obviously, if you want to do a retake, you can talk about that with me next time you see me. Uh, if you miss that quiz, you can find it on our whiteboard. It should be on the far left side of the whiteboard if you're looking at it. Um, so you can work on that this class and then just give me your no notebook next time you see me and let me know that you took that quiz. Uh, we're also going to have our learning lab on Thursday and Friday, so you can always connect with me then. Today, we are moving on from sound and moving into light. One thing that you may want to look at is, are those two things going to be related or are these two completely separate units? Let's start with a similar warm-up. We started sound by asking a question of what part of our body hears sound. Today, our warm up is what part of your body sees light? Now, there's a pretty obvious kind of like elementary answer to this. Um, so if you know the body part that sees light, you can also think about what part of that body part sees light. Just kind of like with the ear, you know, the ear hears sound, but technically it's our ear drum, right? That's first going to begin vibrating. So what would be the equivalent of the eardrum for the eye? Now, you can pause this video at any point because I'm just going to kind of keep going. Um, but in order to kind of keep up with this, go ahead and feel free to pause that video. Um, that way you can kind of you know, pace yourself uh, throughout the course of this lesson. All right, next, I'm going to have you guys look at what are the seven colors of the rainbow. So you think about what a rainbow looks like. You know, obviously one hint is what are those seven colors? Uh, think about, you know, just put them as many as you can think of onto your warm up. You can pause the video and we move on. What are we learning today? Today, your guys' focus is going to be able to make a model of how humans detect light. One way we're going to do this is we're going to start by building kind of an initial model of what does that light look like, right? When we um, have some sort of light source, right? What's going to happen between that light source and our eyes? And then what happens inside the eye? And then what happens between the eye and the brain? So this is kind of the example that you're given here. So you have your light source. So thinking about what's going on there. In our previous sound model, right, in the in-between space, right, we had a bunch of different dots kind of representing our air molecules. And those air molecules began to vibrate as sound was traveling across. So are we having particles of light that are traveling in between, right, the light bulb um, and our eyes or something else going on? Right? Can you represent that with some squiggly lines that look like this? Right? Or is it going to look something like, you know, maybe just represent with arrows, right? Like traveling. Um, I don't know, just maybe some straight lines. So you think about what is going on in this medium. What's happening in this space? Secondly, once the light reaches your eyes, what part of your eye is detecting the light, right? Is it, you know, somewhere kind of in this front area? Is it somewhere in the middle of your eye where those light beams are traveling to? Is it somewhere in the back of your eye? Where those light beams are traveling to. What else? This is your model. And then between your eye and your brain, what's going on? So again, you can pause the video, um, spend some time working on this initial model. Right? This is just kind of a what do you think? light looks like, right? It's a little bit ironic because, you know, in one way we can see the light and in our way we can't, 
So what is going on in this medium? What's going on in your eyeball? What's going on between your eyeball and your brain? Again, sketch um, and or use words. All right, moving on. One thing that we're talking about here is we are talking about the light that we can see. Now, what we'll kind of learn is um, in this unit, there's more light than what we can just see, just like there's more sound than what we can hear. Now, we'll talk about colors a lot today because colors are a big piece of what we're going to be able to see. So take a minute. You kind of did this for a warm up, but now we're kind of putting these in order. We're thinking about the colors of a rainbow. I gave you guys the first letter for each um, color of the rainbow. I want you guys to look at what are each of those seven colors. So take a minute, you can pause the video, and kind of go over. All right. So if you did this correctly, we got red. You know, this is kind of going back to elementary school art class. Orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Again. Here's kind of a cool little picture of a rainbow over Tacoma. Uh, what we kind of notice is, you know, in a real rainbow, um, they are not like super distinct colors. Again, there's some that are kind of obvious in here, right? You can kind of see our red, you can see our yellow, our blue, maybe a little bit of the violet, um, but really they all kind of merge together. So we'll talk about what causes a rainbow and we'll kind of do a little lab in creating our own rainbows um, later in the week. Our focus today is going to be using this simulation. And so most of this class, you're going to be uh, using this simulation um, and doing a reading. So um, for most of the questions on our papers, you guys are going to be using the simulation. So again, on a device, you guys can either type in the link on your computer or you can scan the QR code. Both are on your paper. Um, so go ahead and scan it. Open it up, show you what it is we're looking at. All right, so I'm gonna go kind of back and forth between looking at your guys' paper. So we got some instructions here. So obviously you have your link, which you can type in to your computer, or you can scan the QR code that's also on your paper. All right. Uh, I kind of have your instructions for what we're going to do on this page. We're going to start with opening the single bulb. So that's this first option. There's a flashlight. There's two options. There's a beam and moving dots. So that is under the flashlight, these two options. So if I turn my light on, right? So I got my beam or what we call moving dots. And you can kind of switch between the two and we'll do both in the simulation. Um, above the flashlight, there's two bulb options. There's a white and multicolored one. So that's the difference here, All right? So the white one is just a regular white light. Multicolor one, we can change the color. So we're gonna just keep it on the default, just our white multicolored one. All right. And then you're also gonna see a filter, right? So at the bottom, we have this little um, circle. They can turn on and off and it's going to hold up a filter this filter we're also going to be able to change the colors so we're going to record here so we're going to record a couple things All right when the filter is the same color as the light source what do we notice is happening so i got a yellow light and a yellow filter All right what do i notice is happening between the light coming out of the light bulb and the light that i'm seeing kind of switch between the beam and these particles 
and go back and forth, right? Then I write my observation in this first box. Then I'm going to look at what about when the filter is different? So I have a yellow light coming out. What if I change my filter instead of yellow? What if I have blue? What's the color of the light bulb and what am I seeing? Again, I can change between the beam and the particles here. My big question here is what is going on at this filter, right? Is it destroying the light, right? Is it like a bunch of little balloons that are just popping when it hits this filter or is something else happening? So give your description here. What do you think is happening? All right, you can pause, make sure that you fill out these three. Again, they can be short answers. Um, you can write a little bit more if you like. Uh, keep it simple. For question five, we are going to change to the white light bulb. So up here, above the flashlight, you can change between the yellow and the white light bulb. We're going to change to the white light bulb. All right, so we have no filter, right? And this is just going to be any flashlight, right? This is walking into a room, the lights are on. This is what you see, right? It's white light coming out of the lights. You see white light. You walk outside, the sun is producing white light. So you see white. Not really shocking. However, when we put a filter up, Something happens to that white light that's coming out of our source. Now, in our classroom, uh, you guys should have these little magnet tiles. So this is going to be kind of a way that you guys can simulate this here in the class. All right. So if you hold one of these up to your light source, um, you might be able to see uh, a similar effect, right? It's white light coming out of the lights themselves. Um, you hold up these filters to it, right? How do these filters affect that white light? One thing that may be helpful is switch between the beam and the particles. Make any observations you can uh, for number five. If we're looking here, we can zoom in a little bit. What do you notice when we switch between the white light and looking at the particles of light? Right, what's coming out of our light source, our flashlight in this case, and then when it hits the filter, what is coming out the other end? So one thing you might notice, and let me pause this, is we're seeing a whole lot of colors. And yet I don't see white. What I do see is I see green, I see red, I see yellow, I see blue, I see indigo, I see orange. Hmm. It looks like I'm seeing seven colors. I wonder where I'm getting those seven colors from. However, when these seven colors hit, our filter, there's only one that's getting through. So my question is, what is happening to those other six? Are they getting destroyed or are they getting absorbed? So when you're looking at number five, you can make your observation. we can kind of compare this to what you might see with a colored light bulb, right? Like uh, a Christmas light bulb for question six. Um, when we think about a, you know, a Christmas tree or a holiday tree, right? Or holiday lights. What each of those light bulbs are, right? Each of those light bulbs is a white light. 
And then they put a colored piece of glass over that white light. So even though inside the bulb it's white light, what you end up seeing is you end up seeing a certain color, right? If it's a blue piece of glass, you're going to see a blue light. If it's a green piece of glass, it's going to be a green light. So again, think about what is going on here. We're seeing all seven colors of the rainbow making up this white light. Interesting. However, when you put up one of these filters, only one of those colors is getting through. So one word we can use for what's going on is that this filter is absorbing all the colors of light except for that one color that it is allowing to pass through. So a blue filter is absorbing our red light, our orange light, our yellow light, our green light, our violet light, our indigo light, um, and yeah, all six except for blue. It is being absorbed. All right, so make sure that you take some time to pause the video um, so you can catch up and fill out all your observations and answer the questions up to number six. Because for number seven, we're going to move on to the RGB bulbs. All right, at the very bottom here, you see we have the option to go to RGB. Now, We'll kind of get into this a little bit more when I get back. But while there are seven colors of the rainbow and seven colors of light, in the back of our eyes, we have something that are called rods and cones. I had this already ready. Whatever. All right. So we got rods and cones. So in the back of our eye, right, we have these rods. Rods are good for detecting light in low light situations. Rods are really just going to be able to distinguish between like different shades of blacks and whites. So when you're, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night. You know, your room is pretty much completely dark with maybe just the slightest bit of light, right? And your eyes adjust and you look around, and you can kind of see, but you don't really see any colors, right? Those are your rods hard at work. What we do see when there is a lot of light is we have our cones at the back of our eyes. Our cones are built to detect one of three colors. You have green cones, red cones, and blue cones. Which means that in the back of your eye, you have cells that can detect green light, red light, and blue light. So the question is, right, so obviously if we shine some red light at your face, you're going to see red. No big surprise there. If we shine some green light at you, you're going to see green. Yeah. Not a big shocker. If we shine some blue light at you, you're going to see blue. Cool. All right. However, we obviously see more than just these three colors. We also see different shades of each color. So what is going on? What happens if we have the same levels of blue and green, right? Are we going to see, like, if someone takes a blue light and a green light and shines it at you separately, are you going to see blue and green at the same time, right? Or are you going to see a new color, a combination? So we got green and an equal amount of blue, right? What color is our brain going to perceive when we're seeing just waves of green light and waves of blue light? So play around with these different combinations, right? What do you get when you mix blue and red? Equal amounts, equal amounts of red and green, equal amounts of all three. Um, you can try having different amounts of each color, make a new combination. And then for number nine, uh, go ahead and see what combinations of red, green, blue do you need to make orange? Okay. 
What combinations do you need to make pink? What combinations do you need to make brown? All right, finally, our question is, when you walk into a room of, you know, the school or your home or even outside, right, we are perceiving white light. The question is, is the light that's reaching our eyes, is it actually white, right? Is white even a color? What we want to do is we want to explain and justify what that is. And then finally, um, you guys have a reading. Uh, for that reading, you guys have a couple options. Uh, you can, you gotta read it individually, or you can split the sections up with your group and do a share out, and then want you guys to revise your final model. All right, if you have any questions, I'll be back in school on Wednesday, um, and then I'll talk to you guys soon.